Okay, hi guys, I'm back. All right, so now we're going to finish up the other page, okay? So we're working two pages at once, basically. And we finished the one over here, and now we're gonna finish this one. Um, the last place I left off on this one was, is um, after I glued all my collage bits down, um, I took my um, gesso, which I used to think called Kills, K-I-L-T-Z, it's a wall primer, you get it at Home Depot. $15 a gallon. Okay. Or you could just use gesso and I put it right over the wet Mod Podge. And when you do that, or you can do it over wet uh, Elmer's glue, whatever you do to mod your stuff down. It, um, it gives it a paintable surface, but at the same time it gives you this nice crackle. So now you have more texture. So that's really cool. Okay. So this is the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to get my podge and um, oh, okay, a lot of times you guys will see me paste down my pieces and then I'll put Mod Podge right on top. I'm not going to do that because I don't have time to let that Mod Podge, um, dry. So, um, and I want to be able to just go on to the next step. So I'll be using my, uh, magazine to glue down on, okay? All right, so I have some pieces here and these are all from my Tim Holtz. Remember I said... If you have a bunch of scrapbook paper or if you have magazines, either way, whatever you got. But I have a ton of magazines, but I also have an obscene amount of scrapbook paper, okay? And I'm not junk journaling and all that, so I'm using it in my um, in my art. So um, I got all these pieces from Tim Holtz. Look at her, his stuff. If you have a Tim Holtz paper pad, start cutting it up. Start ripping it up, cutting up, getting cool things. He has so much cool stuff to work with. It's like ridiculous. Um... And also, if you don't have if you don't have much scrapbook paper or that's not your thing, go to the magazines. There's tons of great stuff in magazines. Okay, so we're gonna paste all this down on top of here. So let's begin. Let me get my paintbrush or my glue brush. Where is it? Okay. Thank goodness I have two glue brushes. So when I can't find the other one, and usually the reason I can't find my glue brush is because it's sitting in front of my face. <laughs> so I designated another one of my brushes to being a glue brush. If I can't find the one, at least I have another chance. Okay. And I um, went through and kind of um, auditioned everything. And like I've said before, just because I don't, I don't edit my videos because I just haven't um, taken the time to learn a new editing system. Well, I've tried to learn a couple different editing systems, and it oh, it was just too damn confusing for my brain. And I used to know the YouTube editor, which I loved, and I got rid of it. I need to stop complaining about that, because that happened like two years ago. Anyway, so I tried to make some decisions ahead of time, like I play with my pieces. I wish I could just show you my playing process, but I'm not able to edit, you know, and speed things up. So, and sometimes, you know, when you're auditioning your pieces that you want to use that can take a little bit of time so anyway it's like it's fast forwarded but it's not <laughs> I mean and not all my decisions are made ahead of time I mean but I do try to make some ahead of time just for the sake of the video okay let me get a paper towel. And if you didn't see how we got to this point, go and watch, um, go to the videos prior to this and you'll see how we got to this point. In fact, go to video, go to part one and you'll see how we got to this point here. Okay. What else do we got? Um, I want to put this at the bottom. This is a bunch of like um, watch faces, which I love. Okay, and then we'll come in. Clo then I'll come in closer too. Um, I'll come in closer, so you guys can get a close look at things once we get this all glued down. Well, actually, we'll come. We'll do a whole close up um, at the end. I like to kind of work far away when I'm doing like collage work so you can get the gist of the idea. 
because you're working all over the place. I'd be zooming in and out like insane. Okay, that's hanging off a little bit and we will cut that or I might just leave it hanging off. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. And you know, I'm using cardstock. These are all like cardstock pieces. And usually I say use Eileen's Tacky, but this podge is working good. So I just actually forgot about that. <laughs> I just kept using my podge. Anyway, uh, let's put this piece right here. So I encourage you to go through your scrapbook paper and um, start looking at some cool stuff to use in your um, in your um, artwork. And you'll start using up that paper. I mean, we really need to use our crap. We buy all this stuff, right? What a great way to use for me to use my Tim Holtz paper pads, any of my paper pads. All this over here was all paper pads too. And a, and a little bit of book pages and music note paper, but but like I said, if you if you don't have, if you've never really invested too much into paper pads, no major. So much good images and magazines. Everything I've done here, you could do with magazines. So, but what I highly suggest to get some Tim Holtz um, paper pads. Heck yeah, if you can for this kind of work because his stuff is so cool. He has the coolest images as you're seeing. Um. And his paper pad is fairly cheap. It's $14, so that's not cheap. But if you use a 40% off coupon, um, it'll cost you, or 50% off, it'll cost you about $7 or $8. And um, especially if you can get a 50% off coupon. They have 50% off quite often. It'll cost you $7 for the paper pad. So that's a really good price, for, especially for a Tim Holtz paper pad. Especially for all these cool images. So... Okay, so we'll put that there. Now, we are going to take um, some, oh, what do you call this color? Ochre, like an ochre co uh, paint color. We're going to mix it with a little bit of um, gesso and color our gesso and go over this whole thing. So it'd be a real light, light little wash. And um, so it'll set this back into the background, but not set back as this is back here, okay? In fact, you know what I wanted to do and I forgot? All right, you guys. We're going to back up. I messed up. I just said all that and I said it the wrong way. But we can correct ourselves. I'm going to use a wash of ochre right now. I meant to use a wash of ochre over this before I glued this down. Okay. But we can do it right now. No major. I'm just sitting looking at going, something doesn't look right. Okay, so take a little bit of ochre paint. Um, I'm using this brand right here. You get from Hobby Lobby because I got them for two bucks on clearance. Oh, it was a great deal. But anyway, they have an ochre in just the regular cheap acrylic paints. Um, use those. So you can also use those. So you get the same uh, um, effect, 50 cents at Walmart. They, they have those 50 cent acrylic paints. They have like an ochre kind of color, and that's ochre right there. Okay. So I just want to take and make a wash out of this. And this time for this wash, I'm not going to use the 
like I said before, how I was going to use that um, gesso. I'm not on this one. I just want a nice watery wash. Okay. And we're not going to touch this, okay? I want to set this back, the background back, but I don't want to set my pieces that far back. They're going to get set far, they're going to get set back, but not as far as this, my original background. This is what I should have done first before I put these pieces on. I was sitting there working, I'm like, why does this not look right? I'm, I'm, I'm skipping one of the steps I wanted to do. But no major. I mean, I don't like making mistakes, but I do like making mistakes on my videos so that I can, so you can see me correct myself. So if something like that happens to you, you can correct yourself. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that's the wash I wanted to do there. Um, I got a little bit of yellow on here, my other page. Okay. So now let's con now let's dry this and then it'll dry quickly because I just did like a basically a water like a watercolor wash when I watered that down. So let me just turn on my dryer. If you don't like it, fast forward. That's dry. So now let's continue on collaging our bits on, okay? Oh, I need that. Where are my little collagey bits? There they are. Okay, let's continue this now. We'll put this here. It was so funny, as I was explaining what I was doing, I'm like, okay, wait, I didn't do something. I skipped something, and this is and that's what I skipped. So as you can see, I showed you the page of what was kind of the goal, but we're using different pieces, of course. And that was, you know, it's behind here. I showed her in my first video what we we're, um, the techniques are the same, but of course the page's not gonna turn out the same because I'm using different bits. And whether I use different bits or not, nothing can ever turn out the same. Okay, that'll go there. And I'm not wanting to cover up every bit of space, of course. I'm wanting to leave some of the original background so that peeks through. So see how I left some of the background here and there? I want some of that to peek through, of course. I might put that there. I might put something else. Just a second. I looked at my collage bits. Hmm, we might try putting two, yeah, that looks cool. I'm gonna put two, two of those here, right? Kind of together, that's gonna look cool. Okay, just gonna kind of let those kind of over, go, over, kind of over glue on each other over glue, like that really makes sense. You know what I'm saying. Overlap, there's the word. I knew it was gonna come out. You know, I'd like to put one more piece right here, like a small piece, kind of small, right here, that's good. Oh, 
There we go. All right. There we go. All right. So I am loving that. So let me put this away. So now we want to set these back because you still want this to be in the background, but we don't want to set it back as much as this is set back. So that's what I said. I'm going to use some gesso. Or do I want to... I'm trying to think about which way I want to do it. I think I, that's what I did on this last page. Just a second, guys. I'm trying to share the same techniques I used on this page here. Um, yeah, that is what I did. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that's what I want to do. Well, we'll start. We'll do it. If it's not what I like, we can always wipe it off, but I'm pretty sure that's what I want to do. Okay. So let's take some, um, some gesso. Oh, and I know what color, what I did. I used a little bit. You can use a little bit of acrylic paint with this, but what I did is I went ahead and used, um, if I don't hit my camera, I used some ink. You can use any type of ink. You could use uh, acrylic paint, but I have this incredible ink by Jane Davenport and it's called Hot Cocoa. And I'm just going to put a drop of it in there. Okay. Rinse my brush here a little bit. And let's see what color we get here. Perfect. So it just has a little bit of brown. We just want to just set this back a little bit. I'm going to throw a little bit of water in. It's just a really nice little, like, tent. Let me see how I like this. Yes, this is exactly what I wanted. Okay. And it's just melting things back just a little bit. It's a very light sweep over everything. Very, very light sweep. Not real heavy. And if you get too heavy handed with it, you can just take a baby wipe and wipe some off. Like I see a place where I got a little heavy handed, I'll just come back and, and just wipe it off a little bit. Because you definitely want to see what's going on underneath it. And I'm kind of going over the whole page with it. So it's even um, cutting back some of that yellow ochre too. Um, I see a couple places that I got a little heavy handed. So I'm gonna take my baby wipe and just wipe over it a little bit. Okay. Let's show that calendar up there. I got a little heavy handed, a little heavy handed there. Cause I still want that. I really want to be able to still see what the things are. I just want them to be kind of set back though. Yeah, that looks good. I want them to look like there's a little haze over them. That's exactly what I want. A little bit of a haze. Cool. That looks awesome. Okay. So we need to dry that. Let me put this down. And let me put this down. Check my camera. Make sure nothing's turned off. Yay, you guys are still there. <clears throat> All right, let's dry this again. Again, like always, if you don't want to wait, just fast forward past the drying.
Okay, so that was nice quick dry. Okay, the next thing I want to do, I love taking my script stamp. I've said before, I do this to almost every piece I do. I just love the way a script stamp looks. I just, I just do. <laughs> so, I'm going to take my script stamp with some permanent ink, which it doesn't even have to be permanent. Which could be kind of cool not to take permanent ink, stamp it on here, and then spray it with water and then let that like drizzle. That could look really cool. I'll have to try that. Okay, so start stamping. And I don't want perfect stamping. Now, just one second. I'm going to take this over to here because I need it to add a little bit more stamping on this page real lightly. Okay, there we go. So I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm looking for it to be like, you know, there's some writing here and there. It could even look like some fading away. So we're not looking for perfection at all. In fact, the less perfect, the better. Okay. And I'm just going to finish up the stamp. And get all the ink off. Okay. Perfect. We're probably going to use that again. So I'm going to set that aside. Um, yeah, drips. So let's do some drips. We'll do some drips with this hot cocoa. You can use any ink. You can also use some watered down acrylic paint. And I like to use a dark brown. So I like to, I love drips. So what I like to do is I like to take, let me get my, let me get a brush over here. It's not that one. Um, I could just do that and then add water and then it'll just drip down the page anyway. Now I'm out of frame. I know you guys, but I can't do this, um, with the book up. So I'll be right back in just a second. I know I'm out of frame. So sorry, but you're going to see the effect of what I'm talking about here in just a second. Oh, I love the way Jane's um, ink smells. Um, I don't know what she did, but it smells like chocolate. Isn't that crazy? So her inks have a fragrance to them. It's pretty cool. Okay, one more little drip of ink and then... Cool. Love that. Okay. Coming back down with my book. Let me wipe up my mess. So I don't have ink everywhere. All right, let me get back in frame. Close up my ink. So this is what the ink looks like. Isn't it? So it's called um, Incredible Inks, and this is hot cocoa, and it smells like hot cocoa. Is that so cool? That's what it looks like if you want to get that. It's fabulous. You get them at Michael's. All her stuff is sold at all of Jane Davenport's uh, mixed media art supplies are sold at um, Michael's. If you don't know that, um, yeah, that looks really good. I love the way that looks. So what I did is I just took my incredible ink, I dripped it at the top, and then I added some water with my brush like this, and then you just you know take your book and let it just drizzle down, and you can get those little things. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to do some black splatters. You know what I do? Let's do some black splatters also. I was feeling like if I, if I need to do black, yeah, no, I want to do some black splatters. Cause I was thinking if I, I don't know if I want to do black splatters on this one. I feel like I don't because I did do the, um, I did do the script stamp. So it's almost like enough black. Okay, let's dry it. Let's dry it.
good enough. Most inks like to dry really fast. Her inks don't want to dry as fast. Anyway, but it could also be because, you know, it's kind of, it's cold here in Vegas. Believe it or not, my house has been really cold, so it could just be that. Because usually things dry quickly here, but it is pretty cold today. Okay, so we're going to get the podge out again. And I have some magazine pieces that I'm going to, that I'm going to um, collage together to make my focal point. Okay, like that. All right, so now I'm using all magazine pieces. All right, so let's get out our magazine again to collage as our collage surface, our glue surface. And you can do it the way where you glue it down and then put the podge on top of it. But um, like I said, I don't have that time for um, drying. So, and if you want to keep working and not have to worry about drying time, you could do this too. So, oh, this piece right here is a half of a watch face. So when you're looking through magazines, oh, when you see a watch, or if you like, if you like watches, rip out watches whenever you see them. I have a collection of watches. I also have a magazine that's full of watches. Um, if I have time, I will um, look here in my craft room and try to find that. I know where it's at. It's over in this one bucket. So, okay, now we're going to put this piece down. Isn't this fabulous? Now what this is, is like a big stack of rings. I love stacks of rings. You can turn this into a water feature. I absolutely love these. I always take these out of magazines. <clears throat> and look in any magazine. You never know where you're going to find great pictures. I love fashion magazines. They've always got fabulous stuff. They always have jewelry they have fashion, they have um, home things, they, they have everything in there. You never know what you're going to find in a fashion magazine. They've got a lot of fabulous stuff. And if you're not a drawer, if you, if you don't draw, um, they always have great pictures of women in there. If you want, if you want to use um, a woman or, you know, some type of a figure, they always have great women and great figures in those magazines. Okay, so we want to go over that clock a little bit. Okay, let me get my hands. Okay, so let's get all this down. I'm using my baby wipe to kind of um, bring all this down for just a second because I'm also wiping any excess glue that comes up. All right, now let's use a paper towel dry off my collage bits and then dry off my page here and if it doesn't lay down completely smooth and you see some wrinkles or you see texture awesome I love texture I love texture from my magazine bits it does not have to be glued down perfectly any texture is welcomed okay in mixed media we love texture look how cool that looks I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna take this as a um, like a china hutch, and I'm gonna put that right here on the edge. Okay. And what I like to do is I just like to go through all my I like to go through my collage bits. I have a um, a container over here labeled, and I'll show you that container. I have it labeled um, focal points. And whenever I'm cutting things out of magazines, I um, just throw them in that container that says focal points. So then when I want to have a focal point, then I just start, I pull that out and I just start auditioning pieces, I start pulling stuff that I want to use, and then I start playing around with them until I find the right set of pictures that I want to collage together. And it'll come to you. Just trust it. It'll come to you. You start playing with it, you're like, oh, that looks right. Oh, that looks right together. I'll, sh 